Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to St. Bernadette's. Today is the first uh, vigil mass of the month, and thank you for coming and braiding the Beyonce running um, <laughs> uh, the hair that I used to today. So our most of our songs will be found here in Breaking Bread, so I will um, announce them as we go. Our first song is Be Not Afraid in Breaking Bread 4 through 8. So please sing with me, Be Not Afraid, and let's stand. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. If you pass the raging waters in the sea, you shall not drown. If you walk amid the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side, no. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Very good evening to all of you. Since we have sang along with our cantor, our speech, the session now, we go through that desert during this time of Lent. Desert means that that is the time that in spite of our fear, in spite of our sinfulness, that barrenness of our soul, we still count on God to walk with us, to walk with us through this journey we call Lent into Easter. And so just like Jesus who was tempted, as we are here in the gospel today, we turn to God for help where we ourselves are tempted, where we ourselves sin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Now, Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effect. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food. With the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the, the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, You shall not eat it or even touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like gods who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes, and desi desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Oh, Lord. 
merciful, O oh Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O oh Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense and my sin is before me. sin and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O oh Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O oh Lord, for we have sinned. A clean heart create for me. Oh God, and a steadfast spirit, renew within me, pass me not off from your presence, and your Holy Spirit, take not from me. Be merciful, oh Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, oh Lord, for Give me back the joy of your salvation and a willing spirit sustain within me. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be merciful, O oh Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the one man's sin entered through one man's sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus came to all men, inasmuch all sin, for up to the time of the law, Sin was in the world. Where sin is not accounted, where there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin. After the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is a type of the one who came to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? And the gift is not like the result of the one who sinned. For after one sin, there was the judgment that brought condemnation. But the gift, after many transgressions, brought acquittal. For if by the transgression of the one, death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ? In conclusion, justice through one transgression, condemnation came upon all. So through one righteous act, acquittal and life came to all. For justice through the disobedience of the one man, 
the many were made sinners. So through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. to you, O oh Lord, Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, O oh Lord, Jesus Christ. One does not live on bread. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during these days and when they were over he was hungry the devil said to him if you are the son of god command these stones to become bread jesus answered him it is written one does not live on bread alone then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whoever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels consigning you, to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. the Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, there are two items or thoughts 
or something that you can work on during the time of Lent. Two items. One is about the similarity between us and Jesus. The second one is the difference between us and Jesus. As we have just proclaimed the word of God, that especially the gospel about the temptations of Jesus, the first item is about the similarity between Jesus and us. Jesus was tempted. And we too are tempted. Jesus was faced with these three temptations in the desert. The first temptation, which was to turn the stone into bread. The second one is the temptation to be a superman or superpower. And the third temptation is to have too much, too much, as some assume power in oneself. So all three of this will, when we reflect about, will also affect our own lives. Because we too, just like Jesus, were tempted in these three different ways. In our daily lives, we always want to have everything without God's help. We want to have power over everything so that we will be like God. We would like to do magic, something spectacular, so everybody will admire us and, we wor and worship us. Other temptations come to us in many different ways. But we should not be discouraged. Temptation are there so that we will be strengthened by them. In the first reading today, the first parents were also tempted. They were like us. And so God gave them the responsibility to decide to choose whether they want to be superhuman or they want to trust God to help them. And of course, sadly, from what we learned from the first reading today, our first parent, parents did not make the right choice that God wanted them in spite of the gift of freedom. And so we will not be discouraged, and we should not be discouraged. We, we are tempted. Jesus had already given us an example that to be human, Jesus, as we know, is fully human and fully divine. And as fully human, like us, he was faced with temptations. And so we will not be discouraged, but we will not always adhere to what being to what we are being tempted with and that leads me to the second point a thought something that we can work on during this time of lent unlike jesus we human beings sometimes and many times before choose to give in to temptations and that is not what jesus is teaching us through today's gospel and what god is teaching us through the readings the gospel is very specific jesus rejected the temptation he rejected the temptations not because he had a choice, but he knew that that is not the will of God, the Father. He rejected the temptation because temptations 
presented him as really something that will not need or someone that will not need God's help. We know Jesus who always prayed to the Father. We know Jesus who always relied on the Father. And all throughout his life, even though he knew that he was God, the Son of God, he never rejected God the Father. And he always called on the Holy Spirit. The beginning of the gospel tells us that Jesus was led by the Spirit in the desert. He allowed God to work with him and to be with him, to be led by God. And if we were faced with temptations, what I would like to suggest is to learn from the attitude of Jesus, how he faced temptation. The promptings of the evil one was very wise. The devil in today's gospel knew scriptures. And the modern devils in our time are wise. They will present us something that will really somehow be relevant to our lives. This serpent in the first reading, the first reading tells us the serpent is a cunning, very bright kind of animal, a tempter. But again, the second point makes us think again and reflect more deeply on this message. Jesus rejected temptations because he would not allow himself to be taken away from God. And so when we are faced with a temptation in our daily lives, I know that we are most likely to, because of our human nature, to give in to it. Because it is just good, evidently. But through this time, especially this Lent, when we are in the desert, in the spiritual desert of life, we welcome the Holy Spirit. We allow God the Father to accompany us and to be with us so that we will be stronger in our choices. Choices for more prayers, choices for more self-denial, fasting, abstinence, good works, these beautiful traditional traditions of the church that strengthened us. I know that we have the freedom. I like to have that prime rib or the steak. I like to have that ice cream. It's so tasty. I know it's cold and everything, but it's still that favorite chocolate and all these many, many other things that really are tasty and are good. And sometimes the doctor might say, it may not be good for you, but uh, we might say that it's good for us, at least for now. But what is important about temptation is that we reject it. We reject them. We learn from Jesus. He is fully human, fully divine. Just like human, he is, was faced with temptation just like us but fully divine, reject temptations. Be assured that the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will always be with us in this journey of faith. Always try to make the right choices. Amen.
Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For as men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear friends, in this journey of faith, during this time of Lent, we allow God to fill our hearts. In the desert, we will always allow God to accompany us. The intercessions are not here, so I will give a few that I feel will touch each one of our hearts. Dear Provident God, we praise and we thank you for this new Lenten season, for this new time for us to renew ourselves and to walk in your holy ways. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each and one, every one of us, for our special intentions, for our journey, our continued journey in faith on this earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are celebrating anything special this weekend, for Lillian and Frank Ruzan for their 51st wedding anniversary, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Walter Moret and Deacon Emil Adams, and for Bishop David Okami, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Provident God, for letting us be here. We thank you, and we give you all glory and honor for just letting us pray the way that you want us to pray, for giving us that freedom. Thank you, Provident God. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, with praise and thanksgiving, we present to you these prayers coming from your people. We continue to trust in you and we continue to rely on your help. All this we do and pray in the name of Jesus who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. As we prepare our gifts, please sing Christ in me arise in breaking bread 528. Christ in me arise 528. Christ in me arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me arise and I will rise with you. Be now my vision, open these eyes, showing me all that I must see. Onward to the kingdom, you are the way, arise in me 
end I will rise with you. Christ in me arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me arise and I will rise with you. Be now my footsteps leading the way, taking me where I must go. Onward to the kingdom, you are the way. Arise in me and I will rise with you. Christ in me arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me arise and I will rise with you. Christ in me arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me arise. Christ in me arise. Christ in me arise. And I will rise with you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name, our good and good of all his holy church. Give us the right disposition, Lord, we pray, to make these offerings for, which, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to eternal Paschal, Paschal feast. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Hosanna, Hosanna in 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy. Therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's now give each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Stay. 
dark of night broke the morning of redemption raising us to life raising us to life bread of heaven savior broken cup of life out poured we are people thirst and hunger come renew us lord bread of heaven savior broken cup of life out poured we are people thirst and hunger come renew us lord come renew Are there any birthdays? Are there any anniversaries? <laughs> My dad remarried us last year on our 50th wedding anniversary. So this is technically our first anniversary with the honor and the privilege and the blessing of my dad having blessed us. So praise God for his, his graciousness. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary from St. Bernadette's. Happy anniversary to you. Thank you very much. Do we have any visitors? Where are you from? Okay, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to St. Bernadette's. We say welcome, welcome. Welcome to St. Bernadette's. And I'm going to say, like Deacon Jim would say, if ever you're back in our area, please come back and visit us. God bless you. Thank you. It's still, it's the end of Black History Month. And so we still have one, we have two people today. They're two short readings and, and two beautiful people who have blessed us with the, their black history. St. Augustine. Many say that this son of St. Monica spent many years doing some very wicked things. Yet, he was one of the most intelligent and intellectual minds the church has ever seen or heard from. He understood what it was like to search for something, to have so much hurt and pain bottled up inside of you that only parting and alcohol and a life of immoral and corrupt ways could only soothe. He understood what true vices and addictions were that many would not phantom this day. Yet he had a, ver a conversion of heart, mind, and spirit. He repented and relied on the mercy and forgiveness of our Lord. Eventually, Augustine was baptized became a Catholic priest, and eventually ascended to the ranks of the Episcopacy as a bishop. He is known as one of the greatest saints to have ever lived and also revered by Protestants. St. Peter Claver was born in Spain in 1580. Peter Claver, a Jesuit priest, while studying philosophy, became influenced to go to the Indies to evangelize and minister to slaves. In approximately 1610, he arrived in what is now known as 
Cartagena. Colombia, which was the epicenter of the slave trade, his mission was to nurture physically and spiritually as many suffering slaves as he possibly could. He would enter into the deplorable conditions of the whole of the slave ship and administer aid to those suffering. Through his efforts of ministry and evangelization, St. Peter Claver was responsible for the conversion of over 300,000 Negro slaves, and he worked tirelessly until his death for the ab abolition of slavery and the salvation of those who had been victimized by it. As much good as he had accomplished, the last four years of St. Peter Claver's life was spent in his room as he was too ill to leave. He was nearly forgotten, neglected, and physically abused by his caretaker. He accepted the abuse as atonement for his own sins. And let us thank our provident God for the wonder and the beauty of all of these beautiful people that we have learned about during this African American History Month. God bless all of you, and thank you. Be safe out there. Let us pray. Give us the right disposition, O oh Lord, we pray, to make this bountiful blessing, O oh Lord, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. We go now in peace. you 